Welcome to the Good Fight Radio Show, a program dedicated to bringing you vital and uncompromised truths that you won't hear in the mainstream media, discussing contemporary issues in light of the Bible and how these issues relate to family, culture, and the church. The heart of this show is to glorify Jesus Christ and expose the works of darkness as He is commanded in Ephesians 5.11. Now here's your host, Good Fight Ministries' own Chad Davidson. Welcome back to the Good Fight Radio Show. I'm your host, Chad Davidson of Good Fight Ministries. And with you as always, the president and founder of Good Fight Ministries and pastor of Blessed Hope Chapel in Simi Valley, California. Pastor Joe Shum, how are we doing today? Having a wonderful day, bro. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Also with us as always, the show's producer, Tony Palacio. How are you doing today, bro? I'm blessed in the Lord. And Chad. Yes. How are you doing today? Because <laughs> no one well. ever asks you how Praise you're doing Lord. today. <laughs> you know what? I think you guys already know how I'm doing. I get to come here and talk about scripture with two of my buds. So I <laughs> absolutely love it. So guys, I know that's pretty much been the makeup of the show, but I also want to tell you guys something else that's going on. Yes, you are here on Typology Tuesday, and we are really, really excited about it. And I'm going to be telling you guys about that. But Tony announced something on the last show, Monday's show, concerning our, he called it a soft, I'm calling it rock hard truth open, okay? <laughs> uh, but nonetheless, we are going to do an online only, okay, an online only presentation launch party, okay? So we're going to have an online launch party. So we need something from you guys. You guys are, av- a lot of you guys are avid listeners, listeners to the show. You guys are avid on, on Blessed Hope Chapel. You're avid on Good Fight Ministries. You guys are always sharing stuff. What we want to do is throw this launch party with you guys. We had a, a great sister in the Lord who Amen. wrote us a while ago who said she had left her church because some of the doctrines that that church held to. And she said she was just sharing the the Blessed Hope Chapel yeah, live stream service and she accidentally clicked on a viewing party. <laughs> And she said, next thing you know, she looked and all of her friends from that church that were involved in that church with bad doctrine were watching. And it was really an encouragement to her. <laughs> Watch and the live stream. Yeah. That's our sister our Kelly, streams. actually. Kelly, I, won't, I guess I won't get first and last name, but our sister Kelly, she's on there all the time. Always Praise encouraging, the by the way. Mm-hmm. And she she always has a good word to Praise say Lord, Kelly. as well on there. So I, I was really excited about that. And I thought, man, wouldn't it be cool if every one of the people that share our live feed and our live stream come on the launch party, hear us do two live shows, and instead of just liking and watching and enjoying, but also getting involved by not just clicking share, clicking share, sending it to your groups. That's something I do, guys. I know I'm an administrator here on uh, when it comes to on the Facebook pages and everything. I'm in a bunch of groups, and I share the live stream to every one of those groups every service, every Wednesday and every Sunday. Guys, I would love for you guys to be a part of that, click in that, and get people involved we want to get as many people involved in the launch party because guess what we're gonna have 24 hours 24 day, 7 radio seven mm-hmm. days a week not just my teaching a lot of teaching from other uh teachers that do a great job and you'll get a good mixture of teaching yeah there. dr walter martin you know the bible answer man we got ray comfort on there we got a ton of really good teachers that you know and it's so vast guys like david leonard Pawson, ravenhill, ravenhill david Pawson. i mean on and on and on it, apologetics you know up the yin yay it's going crazy <laughs> over there yeah. so one for israel Oh, Amazing man. shows about how to witness to Jews and from, done by Jews in Israel. It's, oh, I mean, this is like a dream station that's just coming to fruition, brothers and sisters, and you'll you'll be blessed. Yeah, and I'll tell you this: Tony and I, we've put on events in the past, and, and Joe's been involved as well, putting on events. And a lot of times, you don't get to, you know throw the event and have the exact artist you want and all this stuff. This is the time where we get to put the ones we want and choose, on there. Man. Yeah. To, and, and I will say one for Israel. I was sitting down checking out and we were doing diagnostics. So I was looking at the radio station and I just heard testimony after testimony. And then this week they had a teaching go viral that they sent out of, it just said, why Jews don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. And a lot of it, it was apologetics. It was answers to yeah. why those are wrong. Cleverly done. And it had 1.4 million p- views last time I checked. So, I mean, it's awesome. And we love being able to partner with these guys. And we're excited to get this truth out to you. So speaking of truth, I know that's a longer announcement. Well, where can you find much. that radio station, Oh, Chad? yes, that's right. <laughs> are we launching it right now? Goodfightradio.org. That's goodfightradio.org. Org. Check it out. Check it out. <laughs> but, hey, people have already found it, so I'm like, how did they find it? We didn't let it out yet. Yeah, so. that's right. I haven't even posted about it on, on we've, Facebook we've yet. We posted some hints or mentioned some hints and people picked up did on it. Did you give it. that address? Yeah. 
a yeah, couple times bit. people oh, asked about it okay. online and so, so i just gave text, him the like, address yeah, listen to the radio session like how did you know <laughs> <laughs> all right guys so let's also as always dig into the word here especially on typology tuesday we're going to be talking about something really really important okay we're going to be digging in we've it's taken us now quite a few months to get through the days of creation and we're not, not even the days we're in day one so. i was gonna say <laughs> we haven't even gotten out of day one we're out of day one today it's a great climax. And I'm excited because we're moving from regeneration, which is obviously a very, very important topic, to also the topic of sanctification. So Amen. I'm going to read the first three verses, and then we're actually going to even talk about verse four today. Look at that, guys. It's going to be four start verses. it and end it today. Amen. <laughs> All right. But it has a big part of your life. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was tobu wabohu, or formless and void and darkness was over the fi- surface of the deep and the spirit of god was moving over the surface of the waters then god said let there be light and there was light amen so the first three verses we've covered i mean in depth you know uh we have a, go- a god who created all things he's out time of space out- outside of a space and and time and matter and he created all of them and they all came into existence in the universe that we live in. And we've seen that this is an incredible foreshadowing. This is Typology Tuesday. So what we do is we go through the Old Testament, starting in Genesis 1.1. And a lot of people don't see Jesus anywhere in Genesis until they get to chapter 3, verse 15, uh, crushing the head of the serpent as a prophetic. But we've been seeing him over and over again in the first couple of verses. And we'll see him again in verse 4, at least his work in our lives. And so Jesus said in the volume of the book, it is written of me. In the book Hebrews, he's quoted as saying, uh, Jesus said, Moses spoke of me. Uh, Jesus said, uh, when on the road to Damascus, uh, a road to Emmaus, a couple of disciples after his resurrection didn't recognize him. Then he opened the scripture to them and showed himself in the Psalms and in the law and in the prophets and opened their eyes. And it says that their hearts burned within them when they saw him in, in the Old Testament scriptures. And that's why we love Typology Tuesday. We're all about Jesus. You know, we encourage people to know Jesus. We are iconoclasts. We take the idols of this world that Christians put before Jesus or professing Christians. We tear them down and say, no, no, no. Uh, that just like the prophets of old, we say, turn away from these idols, turn to Jesus. Then we lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. And we need to get to know him better and love him more. So as we're, and I'm just blown away. I, I am thoroughly blown away. I love the Old Testament because the Old Testament basically puts flesh and bones onto the New Testament principles. You can see these things were written out as examples, right? So that we'd be warned not to fall the way they fell, 1 Corinthians 10. Uh, Romans chapter 15 and 16, they were written also that we would have hope because it's all about Jesus. So it's interesting, as we're going through Genesis, the first few verses, I made it very, very clear that scriptures clearly use the creation account to teach spiritual principles that God intended as pictures that would foreshadow our redemption in Jesus and that God orchestrated his creation as a divine uh, production uh, uh, foreshadowing the way he did each day of creation to foreshadow his creation uh, working in us, bringing forth the new creation. Remember, Paul talked about how we are new creations in Christ Jesus. He said that uh, a little bit after he mentioned that God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, Genesis 1, right, has shined in our hearts, right, and the, through, the, through the person or in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when we were born again and we came to know Jesus, the creation account was a picture of, of the light of Christ bursting into our lives. And just as God brought life and light and regeneration or or generation, life and fruit into the early creation, so he's brought the fruit into our lives through the light of Christ. So that's the first three verses. And and now we're going to be looking at verse 4 and how, what what is that saying? How does that pertain to my life? So keep in mind, the first few verses, we have creation. We have, as Chad mentioned, it was formless and void, Tohu, wa, bohu, that was us. We were without form, right? We were empty, void, and then guess what? The Spirit of God was hovering over our lives, even as it was hovering over the waters, and the Holy Spirit was convicting us of sin, amen, and speaking to our hearts, amen, drawing us to Christ, amen, and the light of Christ came into our lives. The Bible says that Jesus, John 1, 9, light is the heart of everyone that comes into the world. God said, let there be light. God spoke the word. Jesus is a word made flesh, amen. He's a light that lights, uh, lights up our hearts. The Holy Spirit speaks to us. We're, we're convicted of our sin. We respond to the Lord's grace. We, we say yes and amen. We confess our sins. We turn to the Lord Jesus Christ in faith. We're born again. We're regenerated. But after we're born again through faith in Christ, 
We're, we're, we're declared righteous. You, you brother, you sister, if you're trusting Jesus, praise God and thank him because you have been declared righteous through faith in Christ. You aren't going to be held accountable now and pay uh, for your sins separated from God in the lake of fire forever and ever because you put your faith in Christ. You paid for all your sins and declared you righteous. Uh, we're his, our sin was imputed to him, credited to him. Uh, God treated him as though he was a sinner, even though he was a sinless lamb of God on the cross. He paid for our sins, amen. And God's righteousness through faith in Christ is imputed to us. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to us. So it's interesting or amazing that we've been declared righteous, but after we're, we come to faith and we're justified and we're born again, you know, and we have the new life. And Paul goes on, on to talk about after the light, after, you know, God spoke and light shined out of darkness, you know, and he says that's a picture of what Christ did in our lives. He talks about how we have this treasure in earth and vessel, and that's Christ in us. That's regeneration. He goes on to stress throughout that book, uh, sanctification, and how we're supposed to put off evil and supposed to grow in righteousness and so forth. And it's interesting that Jesus, when he came, he's the word who created all things, John 1, 1 through 3. And then in verses 4 and following, we see in the Gospel of John, Again, just like 2 Corinthians where Paul did it, where he talks about this regeneration being depicted by God's light and he used the creation account again. Then in John 1, 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us and he, we have seen his glory, the glory of this only son from the father, full of grace and truth. And then in John 1, 18, there's no one that shows us God like Jesus because he's the word, he's God, the creator made flesh. And John 1, 18 says, no one has seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side, he has made him known. So Jesus makes God known like no one else could because he's God and he's man. If you were to see God in all his glory, because the Bible says God is light, if you saw him in all his pure glory, not veiled in the flesh, you'd be incinerated within a second because the Bible says he's a consuming fire and none can dwell in his presence. But guess what? The pure in heart will see God through Christ, through the resurrection, through knowing him, but check this out. This is where it gets, starts to get deep. Jesus is the light of the world because he's the God man. So we're able to look at him and Jesus said, if you see me, you've seen the Father. And he said, I am the light of the world. He that follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. And now we're going to get into verse four. But just before I get into verse four, think of Jesus as the light of the world. How is Jesus unique? There's God and then there's humans. Jesus is both God and man. God became flesh. So we have simply a human nature. God simply, the Father and the Spirit, have the nature of God. Jesus is unique because he never changes the same yesterday, same yesterday, today, and forever in the sense that he never ceased to be God, but he partook of human flesh. And now he has a dual nature, and he's light. It's kind of interesting because light, you guys, is different. It's considered matter still, you know, but it's different than every, every, other, every other aspect of matter because it has a dual nature. It has particles and it has waves. There's nothing you can point out in the entire universe that I'm aware of. Please let me know if you're, you know, a, if you're a physicist or, uh, you know, you, you study these things. I'm, that's the only thing I'm familiar with that has both particles and waves. Light has a dual nature. Jesus, the light of the world, has a dual nature. Okay, light is a picture of him. And when he sends forth a light, he's sending forth a picture of himself in early creation, which I think is fascinating. Now, in Genesis 1-4, we should, we should have like applause. We should have like praise the Lord, <laughs> yeah. excitement. We're in verse 4 uh, because now we read regarding that first day, God saw the light was good. God separated the light from the darkness. This is before, this is very fascinating because it's before he creates, you know, the sun and the stars and the moon in day four. He already has light there and it's a precursor to the other light that's going to show up. And it's a picture of the light of salvation. Oh, Tony, I was playing, man. <laughs> Some applause. Praise right the Lord, you're in verse four. And it's not praise the Lord because you guys are doing good. It's praise the Lord, you're finally here. Yeah. You've limped across the line. <laughs> okay, so verse, one, verse four says, God saw the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. Now, brothers and sisters, and brothers that are right here with me, if the Christ is depicted by the light, which Paul in 2 Corinthians 4 and John, as we've seen in John chapter 1, clearly show it is. If it's a picture of the light coming into our lives in salvation, what might be the separation of light from darkness? 
be in regard to our salvation experience? A picture of what? Well, that would have in our salvation. That would definitely depict sanctification. Amen. How would that depict sac- sanctification? <laughs> well, easily you're having God separate us from yeah. the darkness. The lights that we separate from the darkness. Yeah. It's like Second Corinthians six. Where- yeah. Oh, Tony, Separation. you're ahead of me. That's yeah, in my no, notes. Actually, no. that's a no good more word. More applause. No, I'm just <laughs> <kidding>. <laughs> that's a good word because that's one of the passages that I wrote down. That's a good. As scripture. I started to think this through and pray about it, and I, I return here off and on, but I thought I need to put some verses together with this, and it's such a powerful picture because we were tohu wabohu, right? We became light in the Lord. The Bible says now we're in in a. Ephesians chapter 5, now we're light in the Lord, and we're no longer darkness. You were darkness, but now you're light in the Lord. So God separated us when we became Christians from the darkness. Jesus doesn't just make us fish as a man. He just doesn't catch the fish, but he cleans the fish. Amen? Mm-hmm. We're sanctified. And when the Lord, he, he comes into us when we're justified. When, when we put our faith in Christ, the Bible says we've been made alive through Christ, through faith. It says we're made alive through faith in Colossians. So faith comes before regeneration. We're made alive through faith, believe and you shall be saved, amen. Believe or repent unto life. So the regeneration happens after the the repentance and after the faith. So we get this new life, but now guess what? We're born again, but God begins to convict us now to turn and relinquish the darkness that we're holding on to and embrace more and more of Christ, who is the light, and we become, therefore, children of the light. In fact, that's what Jesus called us to become in John chapter 12, verse 35 and 36. So Jesus said to them, For a little while longer, the light is among you. Walk while you have the light, so that darkness will not overtake you. Mm. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light or Mm. sons of light. That's a great passage. By the way, that shows you that you do have a choice in your salvation, that you have a choice as to whether or not you're going to choose to walk in the light or not. Jesus presents it as though it's a real, genuine, bona fide choice and it definitely is because if we don't believe on him it says that scriptures say jesus said this is condemnation that they did not believe in the only begotten son of god we are condemned based on not doing something we ought to do and jesus says if you don't believe my words believe my miracles he seeks to persuade us to make that choice so when we embrace jesus we become children of light through faith now as we have become born again we're called to be sanctified and sanctification has to do with becoming more like Christ. It's basically takes place through the work of his word. Jesus said, sanctify them by thy word. So brothers and sisters, you want to grow in your sanctification now. You want to grow as children of the light and relinquish as much darkness as you can in your life. And that comes, sanctification comes through spending time with him in his word. Amen. Father, Jesus says, Amen. sanctify them by thy word. We also see in scriptures that we're sanctified by the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen as we're brought from glory to glory, from one degree of glory to the next, which is also back to that picture of the light shining in the darkness, what Paul uses for the new creation. So we're sanctified by the Spirit. We're sanctified by the Word of God. Amen. God uses discipline. He spanks us at times, uh, <laughs> trials to sanctify us. But we're to become children of light. And we read in 1 Peter 2, nine, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him, the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. In 1 John chapter 1, I love this. It says in verse 5, beginning in verse 5, this is the message we have heard from the beginning. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. We've heard from him and announced to you that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. Some teach the lie of pantheism, you know, or panantheism, that God is in everything, panantheism, or pantheism, that God is everything. There's a big problem with that. If God's in everything, guess what? And if we're God, as New Agers teach, those that are involved in the new spirituality, those that teach forms of Hinduism and so forth, if we're all God, then God's a sinner because we're sinners, Mm -hmm. man. We're darkness, and that's blasphemy. God is not a sinner. We are not God. And the Bible says God is light. In him, there's no darkness at all. He's distinct from his creation. If we say that we have fellowship with him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. So don't claim to be a Christian. Don't claim to be following Jesus if you're walking in darkness. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. In Colossians 1, verse 13 and following, Paul says that he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son. 
in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of our of sins. That's a blessed passage. Remember, Paul, who wrote that, was in darkness. He was in great darkness. He said he was filled with vengeance and anger and was persecuting the church and uh, he's guilty. He was the chief of all sinners. And God got a hold of him on the road to Damascus when Jesus appeared to him in light. And he was blinded by the light. And the Lord made him docile and dependent upon himself. He's blind for three days until his sins were washed away. So it's amazing when we read this, Paul's own conversion in Acts 26, when he's converted on the road to Damascus, the mission that Jesus gave him, we read uh, that Paul stated that the Lord said, I will rescue you from your own people and from the Gentiles. I'm sending you to them to open their eyes so that they may turn from darkness to light and from the power of Satan to God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and the inheritance among those sanctified by faith in me. So sanctification has to do with being uh, leaving, our, having our eyes open and turning from the kingdom of darkness and turning the practice of the behaviors that are associated with darkness to the light of Christ, from the power of Satan to God. I remember when I was a new Christian, I was reading through the book of Acts and that just jumped out at me. Wow, God saved this man who was having Christians killed, gave him a mission to reach people, to rescue them from the kingdom of darkness to, to the kingdom of light, from the power of Satan to the power of God. And this, it, Paul says, that we might have an inheritance among those sanctified, that Jesus said, that those that are sanctified by faith in me. So we see that we're sanctified by the word, by the power of the Holy Spirit, and also through faith, trusting Christ. And this is very important because right now, uh, we live in sad times because a lot of preaching is going on right now about justification, about being right with Jesus, uh, being forgiven, being saved, you know, being born again. And a lot of times it gets messed up. The preaching talks about, well, you have to wait around, hopefully you'll be born again sometime then you can have faith in Christ because you can't have faith in Christ until you're born again. Well, how do you know you're born again, mysteriously, you know? And the Bible actually teaches to believe, put your faith in Christ to be born again. But there's a lot of emphasis, and rightly so, on the need to be justified, the need to be made right with God through the preaching of the gospel. And that's our call, to preach the gospel, amen? But Paul didn't just preach justification. He also emphasized throughout his pastoral epistles the need, as did John in first second. John, and as did Peter, first and second Peter, you know, as did Jude, as did James, as did the author of Hebrews. The emphasis is also on Hebrews, uh, on, on a, not only in Hebrews, but on sanctification and being separate from that which is evil. Sanctification is a process by where God takes us out of darkness and weans our behavior from darkness and consecrates us and allows us to be consecrated. It takes a choice, okay, where you where you consecrate, you surrender yourself to the Lord and you consecrate yourself to his holiness and you become more and more holy. The problem today is that not many are preaching about sanctification. There's a lot of emphasis on justification, but if you only emphasize justification, but you don't talk about walking in holiness, you don't talk about walking with Jesus, you don't talk about leaving the darkness and put it, putting off the old man and putting on the new man, uh, there's a, there's a lot, lot of danger there uh, because Jude warns about those who turn God's grace into a license for morality or immorality. Uh, verse 3 of Jude, he says, to earnestly contend for the faith which was once for all delivered to the saints. But then he goes on to say, for certain men have crept in unaware who are turning the grace of God into a license for immorality. So sometimes the grace of God is twisted by teachers where they emphasize that you've been justified by faith and then they say, hey, now that you've been justified, Praise God, you know, you've been justified. And then they don't teach that you need to repent, you know. They don't teach that you need to uh, trust Jesus and follow him as your Lord and 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 and, 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 and become uh, more and more like Christ. And it's horrifying because you have millions. I'm not, I'm not kidding, guys. It's not thousands. It's not tens of thousands. It's millions of professing Christians who are walking in darkness, who are involved in sexual sin, who are involved in drunkenness, who are smoking pot and getting stoned and who are, you know, beating their wives or, you know, going to nude bars or whatever else, and they think they're going to heaven. And we need to emphasize sanctification, that God separated the light from the darkness, just like he did in the fourth day. He separates us from darkness. And that, that was a problem years ago where they weren't preaching sanctification. In Ezekiel 22, 26, mm -hmm. God comes down on the priest. He says, the priests have done violence to my law and have profaned my holy things. 
They have made no distinction between the holy and the profane. Okay, they have taught, they have not taught the difference between the unclean and the clean. And that's what's happening today in our churches. There's not a distinction being made. So people are filled with hearts full of adultery and, and, and a lack of sobriety, drunkenness, and, and just hatred. A lot of people are caught up in unforgiveness and bitter at other people in the church and bitter at family members and, and, and not asking God to heal their hearts and, and not repenting of bitterness and wrath and things of that nature. Uh, people are filled with, you know, uh, just, you know, covetousness, just a desire for other people's stuff. I mean, it's all over in the church. It's sick. And it's because oftentimes sanctification is not being preached. If you're a pastor, I just got a couple different texts from 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 pastors just recently that are trying they're trying to do a great great job for Jesus, and I'm sure are on, on praise God and Lord empower them. But I know pastors listen to our uh, our shows and so forth. Make sure you are preaching sanctification from Amen. the pulpit. Amen. Don't leave out justification, but emphasize sanctification, especially in a day and age where Satan is trying to blur the lines between light and darkness. Without that sanctification, no one's going to see the Lord. That's right. Without holiness, no one will see the Lord, right? Hebrews chapter 12. Amen. And uh, it's interesting because today, God made a clear demarcation when he created the heavens and the earth between light and darkness, day and night, you know? It wasn't like just one blurry, you know, 24-hour period. And he wants our lives to be very distinct to where people can see that we're in the light and not wonder if we're Christians. They should be able to say, wow, that person stands out, man. That person's a bright witness for Jesus. They may disagree with you. And today we need it more than ever because right now, I mean, what kind of laws do you think got blurred in the Old Testament? In Leviticus 18.22, it says, do not practice homosexuality, having sex with another man as with a woman. It is a detestable sin. Guess what? Today, people don't make, make a distinction between uh, sexes, they, between sexuality. Jesus said that in, in Matthew chapter 19, have you not read that from the beginning the Creator made them male and female and said, for this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be united to his wife and the two shall become one flesh? I mean, there should be a distinction between heterosexuality, homosexuality, and homosexuality is sin. How about the sexes? Right now you have a hundred different identifications that people can say, well, I'm not male or I'm not female or I'm a male, but I'm really female. Listen to Deuteronomy 22.5. A woman shall not wear a man's garment, nor shall a man put on a woman's cloak. For whoever does these things is an abomination to the Lord your God. The Bible calls for a distinction between the sexes. And we're in the New Testament, we're in the law of Christ, and there's still a distinction made between how we're to walk and how we're not to embrace homosexuality. We're not supposed to embrace these deviant lifestyles that are being pushed on the church and conformed to the world. And you know what? I thought I might get through one verse on one day on one setting in sanctification. So we're running out of time. So we will deal and finish up our message on God separating the light from the darkness, sanctification next week, Lord willing. God Thanks bless you guys. Press on and grow in your sanctification and your love for Jesus. Amen. You've been listening to the Good Fight Radio Show brought to you by Good Fight Ministries. If you're blessed by this show and would like to partner with us, won't you consider visiting our support page at goodfight.org? Or you can write to us at P.O. Box 2202, Simi Valley, California, 93062, or call us toll-free at 1-866-JC-TRUTH. That's 1-866-528-7884. We hope you'll tune in next time on the Good Fight Radio Show.